put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Liar Liar Movie Review Fletcher Reed is a slick, smooth lawyer and he continues to disappoint his son by basically putting work over his son, which is, you know, obviously sappy, corny, but also kind of sweet message, and very 90s. Now, at his son's five-year birthday party, he makes a wish that his father cannot make, can, cannot lie for 24 hours, and that, you know, that's one sort of magic realism element of this, because everything else is basically the real world. And the wish comes true, which makes Fletcher's job nearly impossible. He, he can no longer defend the indefensible, both people and actions. He, he can no longer suck up to his co-workers or bosses, and he's forced to admit one unwanted truth after another, and this is, you know, where the main, uh, the most of the jokes come from this, him having to admit unwanted truths. Now, I've owned this on VHS, yes, VHS, uh, it gives you an idea of how long I've had my copy, and yeah, basically since it came out, and I've watched it dozens of times over the years. Now, this video is the first in a series of, I'm, I'm going to try to review one movie a week that I've seen years ago and that sticks with me, that, you know, yeah, that I really have some, some feelings about that really, yeah. Now, and for now, the plan is movies that I also really like you know, positive feelings about them, and that I already own a copy of. Now, Tom Shadyac, who directed this, is one of my all-time favorite comedy directors, up there with John Landis, and he always gets the best Jim Carrey performances, and makes the best Jim Carrey movies. Comedy movies, that is. Now, the... Any Jim Carrey movie has to explain why is he overacting like that, and some of the some of the ones where they don't really explain it, you're kind of you know it it really strains credulity that they don't. Now in this one, it's you know the the wish, and he you know the where in like the mask, it's the mask. And you know, and in this one, another part of it is his passion. He really, you know, needs to do well at his job, and him trying desperately to lie. Yeah, he's he's fighting himself basically. Now, this movie really highlights how often we lie on a daily basis, and. Most of the scenes are hilarious, and the movie just does not get old. In addition to being comedy, it is genuinely a court movie. You know, the witnesses are called and questioned, evidence is, you know, presented, and the, the lawyers make arguments. Now, this is arguably kind of a one-note joke. And in spite of that, it just does not get old. It's infinitely quotable. It is fairly raunchy, and you don't necessarily want the kids to watch, in spite of it being kind of a family movie otherwise. Now, Jim Carrey pulls faces and yells, strains to 
tell the truth in spite of having to lie. You know, he moves fast, there's slapstick. You know, the... He, he makes pop culture references. And this has... You know, today the whole figurative literal thing is, is much... You know, it's kind of a meme. This is one of the... You know... This came out way before that, and it actually has a very clear figurative versus literal. There's a point where he has to admit a truth, and he says someone is something figuratively, not literally. And, yeah. Now, and he and the other characters kind of play off each other. And he, he has these monologues, which is also always kind of a... It's kind of a risk in comedies. You really have to have an actor and a character in writing that makes, you know, that keeps the audience from getting, you know, bored with that. You know, it, it's, it's kind of... Jim Carrey comedies are often kind of a one-man show, but in this one, yeah, the, the monologues are great and occasionally interrupted, which is also a nice subversion. And, you know, the, and he's also obviously very charming. But yeah, part of it is also that there are reactions to it, you know, often just reaction shots. I, I'm of the opinion that you shouldn't make one thing the focus. You can't make one comedic performance the focus of your movie purely, and you can't make the monster of your horror movie pure of the focus. You have to have other characters reacting to that. That's what really keeps it from, again, getting to be boring and getting to be kind of, you know, the reactions of others is part is is a big part of what makes something really funny or really scary. Now there are some lines of this that really, you know, highlight kind of that really speak truth about lawyers now and you know there's that saying everybody hates a defense lawyer until they themselves need one and while we laugh at this hotshot lawyer you know hotshot used to be flying lawyer as you know he no longer can be you know slimy we also care as his humanity comes forth Now, I suppose that more or less brings me to... Yeah. As I mentioned, I've owned this on VHS, you know, ever since it came out. Watched it tons of times over the years. That there is, unfortunately, a bit of a... This is where I get into the divisive part of the review. Having watched it over the years, more recently becoming more of a feminist, I've realized some things about the movie that, yeah, that are a little troubling, let's, let's say. And, you know, to be fair, these aspects are nowhere near as bad as that one aspect of Ace Ventura. Which, again, is a movie that I overall like a lot. Now, the... the yeah, so, so the reason I'm going to get into these, these aspects is, you know, as much as I love the movie overall, I do try to be honest in my reviews and say both the good and the bad, regardless of how much you know, no matter how much I dislike a movie, I'm still going to try to say something good about it if I can think of something and vice versa for, yeah. Now, the, just immediately covering the, you know, reactionary arguments, you know, it's just a film. Yeah, it's a film, but it's one that expresses and reinforces the values of the culture that it was made in. It's just for kids. Kids are a lot more mature than a lot of people give them credit for. And they're also very impressionable. And for these two reasons, I find that we should try to 
impart good values in our fiction. And one part of it is also that this movie is trying to promote good values. It just, there are some of these values that it doesn't, you know, yeah, because at the same time as it messes up these other values, it is trying to say, spend more time with your family, you know, don't favor work over them, and don't lie, you know, live a truthful life. Now, the... Yes, so the... Starting with the... The, the stepfather in the, 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 I should mention, Fletcher is divorced from the mother of Max. And the new boyfriend is, you know, it's, it's good that he isn't, like, made to be a jerk. It's, it's more realistic and it moves further away from Hollywood and Hollywood simplicity. But they do kind of make him too perfect. He's he's very much a gay stew. And you know, the the and Max is also very much I mean cute kid, not not annoying, and he clearly loves his father. And you know, they do have like the movie has touching scenes in addition to hilarious ones. But yeah, it he's also kind of perfect so it and and the the ex-wife while both Fletcher and the ex wife Audrey I think they're they both have kind of a bitter relationship with each other but it's she is also very bland and inoffensive it's kind of the, the the movie is too afraid of having the family be actual characters. They you know they desperately want to make sure that we like them and want to see you know good things happen to them. Want to see Fletcher not let his son down. Now, worse is the characterization of the female characters. I've already briefly touched upon the ex-wife. That's not a huge issue, but she is touched a little by the following, but not as much as our characters. The female characters in this are vindictive and or they use sex to hurt people or they cheat. You know, they, they're shrews. I, you know, I point to Heather Locklear as an actress who can exude power and ambition without coming off as a shrew. And yeah, I suppose that is about it. But yeah, basically, we're supposed to really find these, find a lot of these women really unappealing, even though. Fletcher himself also cheated, but it's one of those double standards where it's always worse that the woman, because she infused the man with sexual desire. You wouldn't have cheated if he didn't see her and if she didn't look so good. So, obviously, it's more her fault. And, yeah. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.